Good afternoon. It is my pleasure to welcome you to the University of Southern Mississippi's 2018 Founders Day State of the University Address. Each year we celebrate Founders Day to mark the anniversary of our university's legislative founding. On March 30th, 1910, documents were signed chartering Mississippi Normal College a humble institution dedicated to training teachers for Mississippi public schools. Classes began for 227 students in September of 1912, and on April 8, 1922, the state legislature authorized the awarding of the first Bachelor of Science degree. Over the course of our institution's history, the university's name has changed three times. First, from Mississippi Normal College to State Teachers College, then to Mississippi Southern College, and finally to the University of Southern Mississippi. In addition, the university first offered classes in Biloxi in 1947 and our coastal presence has grown to include major operations at our Gulf Park campus in Long Beach, in our School of Ocean Science and Technology, housed at our Gulf Coast Research Laboratory in Ocean Springs and the John C. Stennis Space Center. Today, we are the only dual campus university in the state of Mississippi. Throughout these changes and others, our university community has remained committed to, to the future of our institution. In 1955, the Alumni Association designated March 30th, now known as Founders Day, as a day to be observed wherever former students reside, and its purpose was intended to build up a little more custom and tradition concerning the university. Last year, our university president, president delivered an official State of the University address on Founders Day for the first time in our institution's recorded history. Today, we will again celebrate as we reflect on our history and promising future. Please join me in welcoming to the podium the 10th president of the University of Southern Mississippi, Rodney D. Bennett. Thank you, Dr. Mosier. Thank you, thank you, Dr. Mosier, and thank you all for being here. Uh, I tell you, I am so excited to have the opportunity to address the university community uh, this afternoon. We are so fortunate to have a campus filled with outstanding, phenomenal faculty, staff, and students. And Dr. Mosier is among the best on our campus and the best academic leaders that I've had the opportunity to work with at four universities now. So I thank him for the introduction and setting the occasion, but also thank him for his service to this great university. I'd also like to offer a bit of an apology for our colleagues who are down at Gulf Park in Hardy Hall. Uh, this morning, when I was there for our ceremony, I mentioned to Cindy Godet, among others, that I had practiced my address for weeks on end. I had it timed just perfectly, and it was 16 minutes from start to finish. Dr. Godet, I hope you're gathered there or at your computer at your desk, but I hate to tell you, as I reread it after lunch, it's not gonna be 16 minutes. It's gonna be a little bit longer uh, than 16 minutes. I'd like to acknowledge members of the university community, as I mentioned a second ago, who are viewing today's ceremony online and those who may be gathered in the Hardy Hall Ballroom at our Gulf Park campus. Thank you so much for joining us. I'd also like to thank the university's executive cabinet and deans who are seated in the first uh, few rows for your presence, for your hard work, and for your dedication to the university. I'd like to recognize two individuals who joined the university's executive leadership team this year. Ms. Allison Easterwood, who is serving as Interim Vice President for Finance and Administration. Allison, if you would please stand. And Dr. Dee Dee Anderson, who could not be here today, 
but who we will soon welcome as our new Vice President for Student Affairs. Thank you, Allison, and thank you, Dr. Anderson, for our willing to serve as our next Vice President for Student Affairs. I'd also like to recognize members of our faculty and staff who received service pins earlier today at receptions held on our Gulf Park campus in Long Beach and here in Hattiesburg. I want to thank each of you for your dedication of 10 years, 20 years, or 30 years of service to the University of Southern Mississippi. This afternoon, we also congratulated two individuals who have served the university for 40 years, four zero years, 40 years. Miss Lucy Cameron, who is an acquisitions supervisor for university libraries, and Mr. John Cox, who is director of broadcasting for the Department of Athletics, also known as the voice of the Go Eagles, 40 years of service to this university. To all of our years of service honorees, your contributions have made a lasting impact on our legacy, and I thank you for your steadfast commitment to this institution and to our students. Please help me congratulate those individuals for 10, 20, 30, and 40 years of service. My remarks for today, while intended to acknowledge the state or status of our university, will not encompass an exhaustive list of all areas through which we are making significant progress or all areas for which we still have opportunities to improve. Instead, I will focus on several key themes that are particularly important to the institution at this point in time. You may notice, for those of you that really love and enjoy and are students of presidents, uh, state of the university addresses, you just sort of mark them and keep up with them and log them and refer back to them weekend after weekend. There are probably two of you in the whole state of Mississippi, Dr. Lucas, who fit that category. <laughs> but if you are that person, you may notice that there are some familiar ideas, phrases, and themes that I shared as part of last year's State of the University Address that I will repeat this year. I want you to know at the outset that this is intentional as our work continues in these key areas for which we are making significant progress as we become a stronger university a more intentional university, a university that is providing what the state of Mississippi needs. As mentioned a moment ago by the provost, the University of Southern Mississippi has been serving students for more than 108 years. The students, faculty, staff, alumni, and friends who have come before us built a legacy over a course of more than a century. And each day creates a new opportunity for us to work smarter, to reach higher, and to push that legacy forward. Public higher education continues to be at the forefront of national dialogue related to significant public policy matters to include gun legislation, freedom of expression, the state of women in higher education, religious freedom, and financial challenges, just to name a few. The University of Southern Mississippi is not immune to this national landscape, and we are working to address what we can within each of these contexts. Since the establishment of universities, every generation has faced its share of challenges. It is our role to be leaders in navigating these challenges for our own university, for the great state of Mississippi, and for our country. It is our hope that as a university community, 
that these conversations continue in a thoughtful, in a progressive, and in an inclusive manner as our country as a whole works towards resolution together. Amidst these national challenges, this year has also been a year of change and a year of opportunity for the University of Southern Mississippi at the local and state levels. We have navigated significant change associated with our financial realities to include a reduction in force that affected some of our employees, but we have also worked together in new and exciting ways to develop and implement strategies for future sustainability to include an extensive work operationalizing the plan for academic reorganization, welcoming an exceptional cohort of new freshmen, strengthening the foundation for our upcoming comprehensive fundraising campaign, forging partnerships with new leadership for the city of Hattiesburg and the city of Long Beach, and welcoming new members of the State Institutions of Higher Learning Board of Trustees, Powell G. Ogletree, Jr., Jeannie Lucky, Steve Cunningham, and Bruce Martin. And we'll also welcome a new commissioner of higher education for the State Institutions of Higher Learning, Dr. Alfred Rankins, Jr. Although each of these changes brings with them an element of uncertainty for the future, the University of Southern Mississippi's stability increases each day. We continue to be committed to our current trajectory. Despite our difficult budgetary constraints, with the hard work completed earlier this year to reduce expenditures, we are cautiously optimistic we will improve our financial position in accordance with expectations from the IHL Board of Trustees and our primary accrediting body, the Southern Association of Colleges and Schools Commission on Colleges. Under Provost Mosier's leadership, an incredible amount of work this past year has been devoted to the plan for academic reorganization which I believe will positively impact our ongoing progress in a number of areas to include our continuous elevation towards recruiting and retaining high quality students. Along with our upcoming comprehensive fundraising campaign, this work has the potential to make transformative impacts on our university. We've already seen the positive influence of these initiatives on many areas, and I'm confident that the year ahead will only continue to advance our work. The University of Southern Mississippi has a bright future. There are times when that truth gets lost in the narrative of daily challenges. Our future is bright because of the hard work of so many of you, our committed faculty, our committed staff, our students, our alumni, and other stakeholders. And because our future is bright, we can continue our progress of moving towards achieving the vision that was first announced in 2014 to be the model for public higher education across our country. When I think about the concept of a vision statement, I think about something that is constant and ongoing. My vision for the University of Southern Mississippi and my commitment to achieving this vision is unwavering. I am a firm believer that you can never state or restate your vision enough, and I encourage each of you to continue working as hard as you can to ensure the vision we are working to achieve 
is one that is widely known and understood by each of our stakeholders. And so, in that spirit, I'd like to recap the six key areas that focus our progress toward becoming the model for public higher education across the country. The first area is ensuring student success, which includes increasing retention, progression, and graduation rates, supporting underprepared students, and implementing student success efforts. The second area is expanding enrollment strategies, which includes identifying programs and markets with growth potential, recruiting top performing students, and enhancing student development opportunities. The third area is enhancing academic instruction, which includes cultivating pedagogical resources, harnessing academic program strength, and supporting retention, progression, and graduation. The fourth area is fostering greater focus on research, which includes increasing funded research programs, expanding student and faculty research production, and commercializing technological research initiatives. The fifth area is bolstering economic and community partnerships, which includes expanding engagement opportunities nurturing mutually beneficial, beneficial relationships, and enhancing economic development throughout the academy. And the sixth area is maximizing human potential, which includes recruiting talented and diverse individuals, leveraging faculty and staff expertise, and retaining high quality faculty and staff. Since this vision was first shared publicly, I have been proud of our ongoing progress in each of these categories, especially when you consider the challenges for public higher education in Mississippi and across our country. Despite all odds, we have become a stronger university, a more intentional university, a university that is providing what the state of Mississippi needs. Although I will not have time today to dive, to do a deep dive on our progress in each of these areas, I do want to acknowledge measurable progress we have made in some of our most critical areas. With regard to, with respect to ensuring student success, we have worked to renew critical scholarships, including the Ronald E. McNair Scholars Program, Lucky Day Citizenship Scholars Program, and Canard Scholars Program to support specific student needs. Through the Office of the Provost, we have launched a, a, um, a myriad of student success initiatives led by Dr. Amy Miller to review and improve university processes with student success outcomes in mind. And we have increased the quality of our student body, enrolling new freshman classes with the highest GPA and ACT scores in our institution's recorded history at a time when national ACT scores have dropped. With respect to enhancing academic instruction, I've already acknowledged the plan for academic reorganization, which will align academic program strengths and create greater opportunities for faculty to work together across disciplines, maximizing resources and leveraging expertise. We have positioned ourselves competitively with premier online learning programs including our online nursing and MBA programs that have been ranked by U.S. News and World Report, and the offices of the Provost and the Vice President for Research have guided conversations aimed at creating more relevant guidelines for tenure and promotion, as well as develop more effective research initiative opportunities. With respect to fostering greater focus on research, we have solidified 
our position as the leader in marine education and research along the Gulf of Mexico through numerous projects and partnerships to include our partnership with the Port of Gulfport to house our new ocean engineering program and the new Marine Research Center, construction of the new Marine Education Center at our Gulf Coast Research Laboratory in Ocean Springs, and producing the first class of graduates in the, in the nation to earn the certification of unmanned maritime systems. So what that means is those are underwater, remotely operated vehicles. I knew you would want to ask me that. These efforts, as well as our partnerships with federal and state agencies, institutions, and industries to form USM's ocean enterprise, strongly support Governor Phil Bryant's Blue Economy initiatives our economic activity and in the maritime sector. Our faculty have earned significant grant funding and recognition for their research in a wide range of areas to include Dr. Jason Azoulay, who earned a prestigious Bell Labs prize for his work in photosensitive polymer materials that can be used for health and medical monitoring. Dr. Kelly Lucas, who was recently invited to testify before the United States Committee on Commerce, Science, and Transportation, based on her expertise regarding the importance of aquaculture in the United States. Dr. Michael Anestas, who will be honored with the Schneidman Award at the American Association of Suicidology Conference later this month, for his contributions to his field while under the age of 40, and Dr. Vijay Raghachari, who earned one of the National Institutes of Health's most competitive grants, the research grant, or R1, to continue his research in Alzheimer's disease. Our faculty scholarship and creative activities have also been featured through national and international platforms to include Dr. Andrew Wiest, Dr. Kevin Green, Dr. Heather Sturr, Dr. Susanna Ural, Dr. Maureen Ryan, whose Vietnam 67 series has been published in the New York Times. Our Southern Corral, who under the direction of Dr. Greg Fuller, recently performed in both Norway and Sweden on their latest international tour. And our National Center for Spectator Sports Safety and Security, NCS4, which under the direction of Dr. Lou Marciani, continues to work with Interpol to deliver specialized training to the world's largest scale event management executives. And finally, with respect to maximizing human potential, I am grateful for our outstanding faculty and staff who come to this university every day dedicated to transforming the lives of our students and who are doing so on salaries that clearly do not reflect their level of accomplishment, their level of involvement, and certainly their level of expertise. Although we have made some progress in addressing salary compression and other needs, this continues to be an area where significant improvement is needed. As president of the University of Southern Mississippi, I am keenly aware that maintaining competitive compensation is among the most significant challenges we are facing as an institution. I have already shared with the IHL Board of Trustees, with members of the Mississippi Legislature to include the leadership of the legislature, the reality that we lose people every year because our salaries are too low across the board. That's an applause moment. 
will let them. Because <laughs> you'll have an opportunity to do something about that soon. I want to thank each of, of you. I want each of you to know that I remain committed to prioritizing improvements in this area as we have opportunities to continue writing this part of our ship. Even so, against that backdrop, we have had some progress and have had significant achievements with regard to salaries, and I'm proud of those, and I'd like to share those with you. We've been able to raise the minimum salary at the University of Southern Mississippi to $21,000 a year. Where possible, we have hired faculty at regional averages and made strategic investments in research startup packages to attract highly talented individuals to the University of Southern Mississippi. Additionally, we have, when we've been able to do so, we have made counter offers to retain high performing faculty and staff who are among the most productive individuals and, we have, and who have dedicated their careers to this institution. I want to thank each member of our faculty and staff for your hard work. Nothing we do would be possible without each of you. And I value your individual contributions to our Southern Miss story. Additional progress in the area of maximizing human potential includes through our Office of Human Resources, Affirmative Action, Equal Employment Opportunity, and Title IX, we have made strategic investments to enhance resources that are available to help all faculty and staff be successful, including the development of the HR Partner Team efforts to increase the diversity of applicant pools and the expansion of in-person HR and Title IX services to our Gulf Park campus and our School of Ocean Science and Technology operations at GCRL and Stennis Space Center. As a university community, we are serious about and committed to creating and maintaining a workplace that is free of harassment and intimidation. A workplace that is free of harassment and intimidation. There is absolutely no place at the University of Southern Mississippi for someone who sexually harasses or sexually assaults any member of our community. As those incidents occur, the university will work as hard as we can to eliminate that activity from persisting, period. Communication, communication, communication. Our ability to communicate with one another and engage one another as we work together is critical for our success. Since I added faculty, staff, and student voices to the university's executive cabinet in 2014, I have been proud of the transparent dialogue we have had, we've been able to engage in, to move important initiatives forward. I want to thank each person who has served in those roles over the past four years. You are making a significant impact. Again, these are only a few examples of the significant progress we have made on our path to becoming the model for public higher education across our country. This undeniable evidence demonstrates our ability to achieve our goals despite our circumstances. In a short period of time, with limited to no resources in many areas, we have clearly become a stronger university, a more intentional university, a university that is providing what the state of Mississippi needs. And I know that we are just beginning on this upward trajectory. 
I remain confident that our greatest opportunities as an institution still lie ahead. As we com continue to commit ourselves to creating pathways to completion for our students, understanding that the learning environment through which today's college students excel is constantly evolving. There is no goal that we cannot reach if we embrace that the learning env environment for today's college student is always evolving. The key to the success that we are beginning to realize is the same as it was five years ago. We must focus wholeheartedly on the recruitment, on the retention, on the progression, and the ultimate graduation of every student that we enroll. Basically, what this means is we as a university community must be plugged in to student success. And student success takes many different forms. More broadly, on a national landscape, institutions that devote themselves to student success in a very intentional, serious, and committed way will be those institutions that continue to thrive. As I begin to close, I'd like to end with the same closing thoughts that I shared last year. Not because I am out of new ideas, but because these words are powerful, these words are reflective, and these words are progressive. Ladies and gentlemen, these words speak truth, they speak hope, and they speak determination for our way forward. All of us want the same thing, to see the University of Southern Mississippi grow and prosper. This is our time, our time to harness our continued momentum and transform our students' lives like never before, regardless of the challenges that we face. Our institution's history is filled with stories of ordinary individuals who have done extraordinary things to advance South Mississippi, the entire state of Mississippi, and our region. That is our reality, and I am proud of that history. The path ahead for us as a community of faculty, staff, students, alumni, and friends will not be easy. It just won't be. But the Southern Miss that I know is not afraid. We don't hide, we don't run, we don't stop when things get challenging or when it's difficult. We band together, we support one another, and we do what eagles were born to do, we soar. I ask each of you today, those of you here in Bennett Auditorium, those of you who are listening to us at your desk from your computer, those of you that are gathered along the beautiful Mississippi Gulf Coast, to join us in identifying others who want to be a part of our work. To join us in supporting our students as they progress towards graduation. To join us in transforming the landscape of public higher education. To join us as we make history for the next 108 years. As president of the University of Southern Mississippi, I thank each of you for being our partner on this journey. And I cannot wait to see what our future holds. Thank you so very much.
On behalf of the University of Southern Mississippi, thanks to each of you for joining us for the 2018 Founders Day State of the University Address. To our community members and visitors who may have traveled here from the coast and from other locations, I hope you enjoyed your time on our Hattiesburg campus and I welcome you to return anytime, many times. In closing, I want to thank each of you, students, faculty, staff, community members, alumni, and friends for your ongoing commitment to the University of Southern Mississippi. We look forward to continuing our partnership with each of you as we advance into our bright future. And again, thank you for being here today. Good afternoon.